Hello, come on in. Today we're going to have a very interesting show on the six separate infantry brigades that fought in Vietnam. We'll look at their unit insignia, we'll look at their crest, and we'll look at the crest of the infantry battalions that served with them in Vietnam. Come on, you'll like it. <laughs> oh, good to have you with us today on Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm Frank Foster, your host, and today we're going to take a look at something unique and very special. We're going to take a look at the six individual combat infantry brigades that served in Vietnam. And you're going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, there weren't six, there were maybe only five or four. I said, no, follow me and I'll explain. I think you'll enjoy it. We'll take a look at the individual unit patches and we'll take a look at the crest. And then we'll take a look at the individual crest of the infantry battalions in each one of these unique brigades. They came early and they stayed late. Well, some only came for a year or so, but I'll get to all of that. So come on, let's take a look. Let me remind you, we're just going to be talking about the individual brigade unit patches, the one worn on the right sleeve for combat, and the unit crest worn on the epaulet. And to make sure you're up to date, the Army, of course, used unit patches and crest on the World War II uniform, changed it slightly for the blue uniform, and now going back to the World War II uniform, it will use the unit patches and crest as it did back in World War II. So what we're going to do to make this easy, we're going to do it like they do it in the Army. We're going to tell you what we're going to tell you, we're going to tell you, and then we'll tell you what we told you. <laughs> we're going to take a look first at the 11th Infantry Brigade that arrived early and stayed late. Then we'll take a look at the 3rd Brigade of the 82nd Airborne, which came on an emergency deployment with many members of the brigade who just returned from Vietnam. That was some unhappy paratroopers. Then we'll take a look at the 173rd Airborne Brigade, came early 1965 and stayed pretty late and is still one of the key units in America's defense. And we'll go on and then take a look at the 196 Infantry Brigade, the 198 and the 199. And they have some very special, well, symbolism in their unit patches and in their individual crests. But something even more special that you'll see nowhere else, we're also gonna take a look at the unit crest of each one of the individual infantry battalions in that separate brigade. Ha <laughs> pretty cool, huh? Oh, uh, special thanks to Medals of America for all the help they've given us in putting this program together. And uh, if you like, let me know and I'll run a little special on that uh, story one day. And then uh, don't forget, if you want to see us again, please give us a like and subscribe. <laughs> all right. The 11th Infantry Brigade arrived in Vietnam in December of 1967 and it stayed until November of 1971. Along the way it was combined with the newly formed Americal Division, but we really want to talk about the 11th Infantry Brigade and the four infantry battalions that served in the 11th. So let's go take a look. The shoulder sleeve insignia of the 11th Infantry Brigade is a shield, oblong in shape and arched at both ends. It has a vertical white arrow between two inwardly curving white arrows. The upper area being between the curved arrows is red, indicating enemy territory, and the colors blue and white indicate the traditional colors of the infantry. The sweeping prongs simulate the elements of a unit in attack and resemble the trident, which also alludes to amphibious assault. The 11th Infantry Brigade unit crest is a gold-colored metal base with a black bow, which is bent and strung back with a red arrow, barbed and feathered red, notched and drawn up to the point, with the shaft passing through a light blue amulet bearing on the left the word swift and on the right true. The bow and arrow refer to mobility and the striking power of the 11th, and further emphasized by the words swift and true. And the bow and arrow also allude to silence and self of movement and surprise attack. The red arrow, the Indian symbol of war, is also an indication of firepower. And the amulet symbolizes fidelity and tenaciousness of purpose. The red, courage, the blue, the light blue for infantry, loyalty and faith, and the gold for inspiration. 
Shown here are the unit crest of the four infantry battalions assigned to the 11th Infantry Brigade Light. Starting on your left was the 3rd Battalion 1st Infantry, which could trace its lineage all the way back to 1791, with the Latin motto, Always First. The next crest is the 4th Battalion of the 3rd Infantry, or the Old Guard, with the motto, Touch Me Not. The third crest is that of the 1st Battalion, 20th Infantry, and the 20th Infantry traces its lineage all the way back to the Civil War. On the far right is the crest of the 4th Battalion, 21st Infantry, which traces its roots all the way back to the Army of the Potomac during the Civil War, and carries but one word on its motto, duty. The 3rd Brigade of the 82nd Airborne Division did not know that it was going to Vietnam and it got rushed there right after Tet and stayed about a year. Uh, there were a lot of kind of unhappy paratroopers that deployed with the 3rd Brigade because, well, uh, several thousand of them had just returned from Vietnam. Uh, but the Army had an emergency and the 3rd Brigade of the 82nd went. And I want to show you not only, of course, their unit patch, but also their individual unit crest. I think you'll find it rather interesting and historical. The shoulder sleeve insignia of the 82nd Airborne Division is a red square with a blue disc in the center, and inside that disc are two white letters on an arch called AA, which stands for the original 1918 designation of the division as the All-American Division. In 1942, a blue tab with the word Airborne in white was added at the top. And crest shown on the right is a fleur de -lis, which represents the battle honors earned in France during World War I. The wings are symbolic of a division's mission, and the motto, in air and on land, express the mission of the 82nd Airborne. The current unit crest of the 3rd Brigade, which is Special Troops, is shown at the top. The three battalions that composed the 3rd Brigade in Vietnam were the 1st and 2nd Battalion of the 505th Airborne Infantry, and their original crest is shown in the lower left with a leaping panther and the winged red arrow point at the top indicating their first jump into Sicily, and the motto H-. You'll see several other variations of the 505th Airborne Infantry Regiment crest. I wouldn't want to shortchange them because they are a remarkable unit. The unit crest of the 1st Battalion, 508 Infantry, is shown here. Their motto is Fury from the Sky, but I couldn't resist showing you a couple of other variations down below, which you might see indicates their other nickname could be the Red Devils. The 173rd Airborne Brigade was the first real combat unit to arrive in Vietnam, and it came in 1965, and it stayed until 1971, originally around Benoit, and then on up to, uh, well, An Khe, and then uh, Tui Wan North, and then it ended up in Bong Son, so, for those of you who tracked it. And we're going to take a look at the four battalions of the 173rd Airborne Brigade, because I think you'll be interested in their unit crest. It's pretty slick, and i uh, got a special surprise for you, uh, throw in a patch of a long-range reconnaissance patrol. The 173rd Airborne Brigade unit patched is a winged red bayonet, and the wing alludes to the fact that the brigade is an infantry brigade on airborne status, and the red, white, and blue are the national colors. The brigade unit crest is a simulated parachute and stylized wings referring to the airborne mission of the brigade. The unsheathed sword pointed to the base and flying from the sky to the ground and the kilt against the red section of the parachute canopy alludes to the combat assault jump made by the brigade in February of 1967. It was the first jump made by any unit in Vietnam. The single sword also refers to the brigade's first, such as the 1st American Ground Unit in Vietnam, 1st in War Zone C and D, and 1st in the Iron Triangle. The 173rd Airborne Brigade had four infantry battalions. The 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of a 503rd arrived in country with the brigade, and the 4th Battalion of a 503rd was added in country. The unit crest of a 503rd shown here is blue and white for the infantry and symbolizes a parachute jump on the Corregidor, known as the Rock. The three parachutes on the wedge above the Rock 
indicate three other battle honors from World War II. Additional variations of the 503rd uh, patches are shown here. I just couldn't resist a couple of them. And on the far right hand corner is a unique patch of the 173rd Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol. <laughs> Hey, if you enjoy this series we've been doing on unit patches and unit crests of all the infantry units, and we can do armor, aviation, you name it, but they all come from Peter Morgan's great book, U.S. Military Patches, available for you on Amazon or at Medals of America Press or at Medals of America in Fountain Inn. So that was a quick commercial in case you didn't catch it. The 196th Infantry Brigade came to Vietnam in 1966 and stayed until 1972. It was one of the last combat brigades to leave Vietnam. I think you'll find the unit patch very interesting, and we'll also take a look at the battalion crest that served, the infantry battalion crest that served in the 196th Infantry Brigade. The 196th Light Infantry Brigade shoulder sleeve insignia is an oblong blue shield at both ends with a double-headed match crossed and looped at the bottom and inflamed at both ends. The color blue is used to denote infantry, and the yellow and red allude to both the cavalry and the artillery. The double-headed match was used during the days of matchlock muskets, was lighted at both ends to ensure readiness. A unit crest is a silver and enamel device consisting of a blue powder horn with a red string looped around a yellow vertical arrow. The arrowhead on the center fold of the silver scroll arched from the ends of the powder horn, simulating a bow between the motto, ahead of the rest, in black. The powder horn is an American symbol for readiness of the rifleman, and it's used to denote the organization's preparedness. The arrow and the bow-like scroll refer to the bow and arrow on the seal of the state of Massachusetts, alluding to the home area of the brigade, and the colors of the three basic combat arms colors. Blue Infantry, Red Artillery, and Yellow Armor. Five infantry battalions served with the 196th Height Infantry Brigade. The first, and starting the upper left-hand corner, was the 2nd Battalion of the 1st Infantry. Then to the right was the 1st Battalion of the 6th Infantry. Then the far upper right-hand corner was the 3rd Battalion, 21st Infantry. And then starting down in the lower left-hand corner, the 4th Battalion of the 31st Infantry. And to be honest, I couldn't resist putting in another variation of a crest. And then the 1st Battalion of the 46th Infantry, which really only served with them from 1971 to 1972. The 198th Infantry Brigade had an original surprising purpose when it was deployed to Vietnam because it was supposed to go up on the DMZ and do a fortified sort of Maginot line like the French put up uh, unsuccessfully in World War II. But that didn't happen, and they later became a part of the AmeriCal Division. However, I want to take a look at its individual unit patch, crest, and the four infantry battalions that served in the 198th Light Infantry Brigade. The shoulder sleeve insignia of the 198th Infantry Brigade is a blue shield arched at the top and at the base, and it has a stylized tongue of, well, yellow and scarlet flame with a portion of a rifle barrel with a fixed bayonet, all in white and that goes from the lower right to the upper left, crossing over the flame. The blue and white are the colors of the infantry, and the tongue of flame alludes to the unit's firepower and the bayonet, a basic infantry weapon, is symbolic of carrying the fight to the enemy. The flame and the bayonet together thus refer to the unit's spirit and readiness to engage the enemy in a firefight or in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the bayonet. The unit crest is a blue dragon's head facing the front with red eyes and nostrils, the last emitting red and orange flames upward along each side. Entering the animal's mouth at the base is a blade of a silver sword with the point emerging between the ears. On either side, entwining the flames and curving towards the hilt of a sword, a silver scroll bears the motto, Brave and Bold. The four infantry battalions in the 198th Light Infantry Brigade are shown here, starting on your left, was the 1st Battalion, 6th Infantry, then the 1st Battalion, 46th Infantry, then the 5th Battalion of the 46th Infantry Regiment, and then finally on the far right, the 1st Battalion of the 56th Infantry Regiment. 
The 199th Flight Infantry Brigade arrived in Vietnam in 1966 from Fort Benning, Georgia, and was originally deployed in the Saigon area. In fact, during the Tet Offensive, when the Viet Cong took over the racetrack in Saigon, the 3rd of the 7th Infantry, one of their key battalions of the 199th, was helicoptered in and attacked the racetrack and cleared it in less than eight hours. Of course, they had a couple of more days of very brutal fighting, house-to-house -house combat and that sort of thing. So we'll take a look at the unit crest of the 3rd of the 7th and the three other battalions of the 199th Flight Infantry. The 199th Flight Infantry's shoulder sleeve insignia is a shield which is oblong in shape and arched at both ends. It's uh, dark blue with a white rim and it has a white spear thrusting vertically going through stylized flames with red in the center and yellow or orange, depending on which variation of the patch, and I showed both, uh, you see there. The colors blue and white are used for the infantry and the spear, an early infantry weapon in flames, symbolizes the evolution and the firepower of modern infantry. The brigade has a unique unit crest. It's a vertical silver bayonet when the blade is encircled by a silver mural crown lined with red, scarlet, all with a stylized continuous scroll in blue, infantry blue. The scroll passing under the point of the bayonet and over the bayonet handle and partially behind the crown and the bayonet guard bears the top two words, light and swift, and at the base, accurate. The bayonet, a basic weapon of the infantry, refers to Fort Benning, where the brigade was activated. And the crown refers to the infantry nickname, well, Queen of Battles. It's also a symbol of progressive and aggressive successful attacks on fortified positions or beleaguered cities. And it was used in ancient times by the Romans as a sign of courage and triumph to a unit which first stormed and scaled city walls. The four infantry battalions that served in the 199th Flight Infantry Brigade were the 2nd Battalion of the 3rd Infantry, better known as the Old Guard, the 3rd Battalion of the 7th Infantry, where you might know by the cotton bale there, called the Cotton Balers, that trace their ancestry back to the War of 1812, and then the 4th and 5th Battalion of the 12th Infantry, and I showed you two variations of air crest, the 12th Infantry goes all the way back to the Civil War to include the Indian Wars, gave them their nickname, Red Warriors, probably not politically correct anymore, and they have a fantastic motto, having been led by the love of country. Oh, what a way to wrap this up. Well, the Bears said that it was about time that the separate infantry brigades got a little FaceTime on YouTube, and so they did today, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like, and uh, even better, subscribe. That'll keep us on the air. So until next time, thanks for joining us at Veterans Medals Workshop. Right there? Right.